Welcome to Metal Casting Lecture Series by Prof. Joy Jeet Ghosh. This is the 16th lecture of a series of lectures. This lecture will be on evaporative pattern casting, plaster mold casting, ceramic mold casting, and permanent mold casting. So, do not miss and watch the full video. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video to access all the videos. Please subscribe this channel and yes, do not forget to like and share. Also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded. Thank you. Hello friends, welcome to this lecture 16 of a series of lecture on metal casting. In this lecture, we will be discussing on uh, some different types of casting processes like evaporative pattern casting or expandable pattern casting, uh, <coughs> plaster mold casting, then ceramic mold casting and permanent mold casting. So four different casting processes we will be discussing. We will be starting with uh, evaporative pattern casting or expandable pattern casting. So okay, uh, so in this process what we do is that as the diagram indicates here, we use a uh, expandable styrene or EPS expandable styrene which is basically we call it thermocol pattern is used and this pattern is placed in a mold and packed up with fine dry silica sand uh, before we pack it up we normally coat it the polystyrene blank you coat it with a certain ceramic material uh, dry silica gel so that <clears throat> it prevents the um, uh, entry of the silica sand inside the mold and we back it up, we place it in the flask and back it up with molding sand which is basically dry silica sand and then pour the molten metal. Now when the molten metal comes in contact with the, the EPS that is expandable polystyrene, uh, what will happen? This polystyrene will evaporate uh, and leaving a very small amount of residue inside the, um, uh, inside the mold. So the metal uh, will replace the polystyrene and you get when it solidifies you break the mold and take out the casting so this is the basic process very simple so what we require is that basically <coughs> encapsulated polystyrene beads this encapsulated polystyrene beads are placed in a in a mold in a metal mold and is heated so when it is heated uh, it, it expands so it is called expandable polystyrene or thermocol as we know it so it takes the shape of the pattern depending on the tie and number of patterns can be assembled just like investment casting number of pattern can be assembled like investment casting and uh, you can see the figure here uh, number of pattern can be made in a tree like structure and then it is coated and then it is placed in the flux and compacted with molding sand and then we pour molten metal when the molten metal is poured this uh, this polystyrene material will burn and uh, burn and vaporize uh, leaving very less residue and uh, the metal will fill the polystyrene space and it will solidify and we get the casting and when we get it we cut it and take out the parts so this is the uh, uh, about the evaporative pattern casting so we use uh, as you see EPC that is encapsulated polystyrene beads and the sand is normally a silica sand or zircon sand or olivine sand or chamati sand is used <coughs> and you have high degree of reclamation in EPC process and there is evaporative pattern casting process so as I have said the polystyrene beads are placed in a mold in a dye and then heat it so it expands and takes the shape of the die and is taken out number of pieces are assembled and then placed in a flask and then the ceramic coating before placing it in the flask ceramic coating is done coating acts as a barrier to prevent the penetration and sand erosion during pouring <clears throat> and one thing is very important you can go for low density polystyrene or you can go for high density polystyrene so uh, in my view uh, in my opinion low density polystyrene is better because they leave very less residue so the process is comparatively 
simple, inexpensive, uh, and it requires minimum finishing and cleaning operation post uh, casting, and the process can be automated. But there are some uh, ad environmental issues with this pattern burning, so that is one issue. issue. Now, there is another another other variation of this process is that nowadays we can directly uh, sort of certain material with which you can directly 3D print uh, the pattern and we can the pat pattern can be dipped in a ceramic material and can be placed in a uh, placed in a, in a flask uh, that is also called evaporative pattern casting that material need not necessarily be polystyrene that can be certain <coughs> material uh, which has very low uh, um, ash content which leaves very less ash content so 3D printing uh, pattern can also be used in this process. This is another application of 3D printing. So this is a evaporative pattern casting of an engine block. This is the flask. You can see this is the component. Now this coating is important because it is an integral part of the casting production since they provide good quality surface. And if you want to know further about evaporative pattern casting, I will refer you to this particular paper, Effect of Evaporative Pattern Casting Processes, Parameters on Surface Hardness of this particular, uh, this is a very good paper. I think the authors are from IIT BHU, sorry, IIT Roorkee, uh, Professor Pradeep Kumar is from IIT Roorkee. So no course are required, no requirements of binders, sand, complete sand reclamation, easy sec out. Uh, so all these are improved quality, environment friendly, slightly their hazard is there, but overall it's good. Uh, disadvantage limitations, thickness is under the limitations. And the sand fall down sometimes in the, in the cavity generated. So that is an issue in this type of process. <coughs> so next is, plaster molding. So it's basically very similar to that of uh, sand casting process. Only thing is that in place of molding sand, we will be using plaster which is gypsum. Uh, gypsum is basically calcium uh, <coughs> calcium sulfate with water molecules in it mixed with water. Uh, and it is also certain additives are added like talc and silica. These ad additives are added to uh, control the contraction and setting time and reduce the cracking because we will be ultimately baking it. So during baking it may contract. So we use certain adults, uh, additives also like silica, flour, talc, etc, etc. Now what happens, we place the pattern and then <coughs> we pour the uh, plaster or uh, gypsum and allow it to solidify and then bake it. So when bake it, it stiffens and we can easily take out the pattern from this stiffened uh, plaster and then <coughs> Then you will be getting an organic system just like sand casting and we pour the molten metal. The pattern is normally made of metal uh, <coughs> or plastics or zinc alloys or aluminium alloys. We do not use wood because uh, gypsum we use, to <coughs> we use water and, and gypsum mixed together. So the water content in the plaster will spoil the wooden pattern. So it gives fine details and good surface finish this plaster molding process. So curing uh, takes around 20 minutes before the pattern is stripped and then we bake it. So one thing you have to understand is that we should not bake it um, at a very high temperature. It should not be totally dehydrated. Then it will create a problem. So that is very important. And so one of the problem in this casting is that although it gives a very good surface finish and uh, the strength of the mold is high, the problem is with permeability. It is, it is not permeable. So what we do is that we remove the air from the mold and we can also aerate the plaster slurry with air and third use is entrack process. In entrack process basically we mix the plaster with 50% uh, molding sand, 50% sand and then heat it in a uh, in a superheated steam under pressure and then dry that will create the permeability that is required uh, in this type of casting processes 
So entire process can be used in plaster molding casting. So the next process is ceramic molding. It is also similar to the plaster mold casting. Only difference is that here the molding material is basically the ceramic. So ceramic is a mixture. Here we use a mixture of finely grained zircon, uh, aluminum oxide, silica mixed with certain binding binders, uh, which is baked to attain its binding properties. So entire thing is mixed and placed over the pattern and then we heat it in an oven so it will be uh, so <clears throat> it will become stiff and we will take the shape of the pattern and then we take out the pattern and then we assemble the mold and then we go about the casting process. So this is also similar to that of sand casting that of plaster mold, molding. Only difference is the molding material. So intricate past. Uh, so what the advantage is that since we are using ceramic, the extremely high temperature metal can be used. So this is also called cope and drag investment casting. And typical parts are impellers, cutters for machining operations, dies for metal working, molds for plastic, making plastic and rubber components. And parts weighing up to 700 kilos can be cast by this process. So what is the slurry of the mixture? Slurry is zircon, aluminum oxide, fused silica are mixed with certain bonding agents. So these bonding agents can be ammonium phosphate, it can be hydrated silica gel. Uh, so we'll see what are the bonding agents. So this is mixed and placed over the pattern and then uh, use a torch. This is a saw process. Use a torch and heat it or by <coughs> true ceramic process we we strip the pattern and then heat it in an oven. So the two processes are there. So in true ceramic molding, uh, here it is mixed with calcium or aluminium phosphate in the binder and the ceramic molds are made by dry pressing method uh, the <coughs> and the mold is finally stripped from the dyes and baked in the furnace. While in the straw process, uh, we use ethyl silicate <coughs> or we call hydro, hydrolyzed ethyl silicate as liquid catalyst and then pour over the pattern and allow it to gel. And then uh, the mold is stripped and heated under pressure in a gas torch. Then it is cooled and assembled and fired before pouring is done. So the typical applications of ceramic includes impellers, complex cutting tools, plastic molding, mold tooling, etc, etc. So this is all about ceramic mold casting. This is the difference between ceramic mold and plaster mold casting. And then we have permanent mold casting. As the name suggests, we have used a permanent mold using tools, <coughs> tool steels. Uh, these are extremely costly and very difficult to make. But again, this gives a very good surface finish and are mostly used for low temperature uh, alloys like aluminium, copper, um, brass, etc. etc. Non ferrous materials are normally not used in this because the die life will be very, very small. So, here we make a die <coughs> which one part is movable, other part is stationary, and then both are assembled, and then metal is poured between the two dies and allowed to solidify. Of course, first we'll be using certain releasing agent like silicone releasing agent and before pouring it. So, the die life is less in this case because <coughs> the die comes under contact with high melting temperature. Mm, and uh, however the finish and the accuracy of the casting is very very high compared to that of a sand casting processes. So this is a piston head which is being cast. You can see this is a coarse coping and uh, you can, this is the die to part die which is assembled and this is aluminium casting is being done. So various inputs gears, gear housing, pipe fittings, other automotive aircraft components such as piston, impellers, wheels, etc. can be cast by this process. And normally it is CNC controlled. So the typical process involves mold preparation, mold assembly, pouring, cooling, mild opening and trimming. Advantage is good, um, good dimensional control and surface finish, more rapid solidification. Now since metal, it is metal, the heat transfer will also be very very high and the grain size will be less. So the casting becomes stronger. However, it is limited to metals having low melting temperature and simple part geometries compared to sand casting. I need to open the, because we need to open the mold and the cost of course the cost of the mold is very high as well as the life is also less of the mold. 
so this is about uh, the permanent mode casting so in this lecture we have discussed about <coughs> Evaporative pattern casting, we have discussed about uh, cluster mode casting, ceramic mode casting and permanent mode casting. Four different casting processes we have discussed. So if you have any doubt, please feel free to uh, uh, put it in the comment box or you can contact me. And once again, thank you for watching this video.